First, I'll start off as most people ask the question, hey, sure for how do I find out what mouse I use? There is a man that can help you out with this. If you're wondering what kind of mouse you want to use, or you might want to switch mouse, try different mice, but you don't want to spend a bunch of money, you can go to this guy, search it in Google, and basically he's reviewed pretty much every single gaming mouse. He has like a top 50 list. And what he does is he, he talks about like the measurements of your hand and recommendations for like certain sizes because certain sizes of mouse fit certain sizes differently and everyone has different grips. Some people have palm grip, I have palm grip, some people have fingertip and some people have claw. So if you want, the first thing you need to do is find a mouse you're comfortable with. And the most important thing about a mouse is if you're comfortable holding it, if you feel comfortable moving it and it doesn't hurt when you're using it. So look up this guy. Now we can go to the different thing, the sensitivity, right? So a lot of people go, Hey man, how do I find a sensitivity I want to play on? Well, first you want to figure out if you're an arm aimer or a wrist aimer. So arm aim is basically as it implies, you're using your arm to move the mouse around a lot. Webby. All right. So arm aim is you go like this, you move across with your arm and one of the reasons arm aim is good is you keep your mouse straight. You have to keep your mouse straight when you're doing arm aim or you, uh, do it in small adjustments, but for the most part, you're moving your arm like this, and that's how you move your mouse. The reason that is good is because the speed at which you move your mouse is consistent. And what I mean by that is when you move across, it's consistent speeds because you're keeping the sensor pretty much the same. If you're now wrist aim is different because you're mostly going like this with a little bit of arms when you need to go up and down. Now this is really good for like tracking and stuff because you can do really minute changes and like just follow people kind of like a paintbrush and arm aiming. You can get like kind of wobbly. That's why arm aimers when they're tracking, you see them jitter a lot because they're like trying to do micro adjustments. Whereas wrist aimers seem really smooth when they're tracking. But the thing with wrist aim is it's not cons as consistent flick wise because sometimes when you flick, you still have to move your arm, but you're also moving the sensor while you're doing it. So it also like pushes it. So you know, sometimes your flicks are inconsistent or sometimes sway up because the sensor becomes not at like the same spot and it'll move up. So the reason you can't do both is because of sensitivity. Now arm aimers most of the time have really low sensitivities so they can actually control what they're doing. Every wrist aimer uses arm aim and every arm aimer uses wrist aimer, but only minutely. So like I said, when you're an arm aimer, you do this, but really for really like minute stuff, they'll go like this. But for the most part, they're like, only moving their arm around where wrist aimers will go like this for most of the stuff. And then if they really need to go somewhere else, they'll move it. But one is more predominant than the other. And so once you found out whether you're a wrist aimer or an arm aimer, then you find out your sensitivity. If you're an arm aimer, you usually go low sense wise. And that's because you need to control what you're doing a lot more. And if your sensitivity is too high, all right, now we can go back into Overwatch. So right now, if anyone just gets their calculator, 400 times seven, that's a pretty low effective DPI. So if you saw me aiming, it'd be a lot of arm aim. But right now I'm like a, har a hybrid because when I flick, I kind of move my wrist as well. But I do a lot of arm because my sensitivity is low and I need to move it around a lot. But even though my sensitivity is so low, my aim is also a little bit easier to control 
because I'm keeping my sensor in the same, like, I'm just keeping my sensor straight. So it's not like moving. So I can be more consistent usually. But that's not to say I can't do wrist on this low sense either. Say I'm standing still and I just want to do minute changes. I just do wrist. But predominantly, since I have to look around a lot. And then if I go even lower, this is like, this is how like some CS players play where your full arm. There's like no wrist movement. It's all just keeping the sensor straight, just flicking with my arm. Now this is a lot easier on training bots than it is on uh, actual players. But this is what I this is what I mean by muscle memory. Is it, it only takes a little bit to get used to. And then there's the opposite end of the spectrum, where you go full wrist. Da -da -da. So let's put my sensitivity like 14, which was like two time. So this is where I'm barely moving my arm at all, and I'm only doing wrist. Awesome and most of uh most of like 360 is just like barely moving my arm so basically your your range of motion is pretty much like this unless you, you're rarely going like this and as you can see if you go like this compared to like this it's inconsistent on what you're usually at so you usually want to stay with what you're doing and then once you go into like highs and lows and knowing whether your your arm aim or wrist aim then you can start fine-tuning it like hmm that felt a little bit too fast so then you can start going on like increments so you can go like half increments where you're like huh does this feel good maybe maybe it was slightly too fast maybe it was slightly too fast and then you go like maybe 4.5 until you find something you're comfortable that's generally how you think about your sensitivity and how to find it and whatnot i'm gonna fail this test yeah you better be writing notes chat there's a test at the end of this and that's usually why i also say sensitivity is personal preference because everyone aims differently everyone holds their mouse differently everything does differently now the only thing i can't go into is this is mostly for palm aimers uh i've never really done claw or fingertip but one of the benefits of claw is it also does the same benefit of like arm aim where you keep your sensor straight for the most part. So you're kind of like this. Now I can use a different friend to explain something. Let's use Osu now. So does everyone in the classroom know what Osu is? We're getting a, ya a lot of yas in chat. Of course people know what Osu is. Now. Osu does not help with your overwatch aim, but it can teach you principles to overwatch aim. And I thought about this while I was playing overwatch. I mean, while I was playing Osu one day. And uh, if you guys want to play Osu, you can try it out. Basically, chat, let's see if you can answer this question. What is the most important thing in Osu? What's the most important moment in Osu? All right, I'm seeing a lot of people. All right. So if you answered anything either than when you click, you're wrong. Clicking when you decide to press your key, that is the most I important thing in Osu. Now, to prove this, I'll show you why. So let's go, let's go to a really hard song, right? I'm probably not gonna be able to do it because I'm not good enough yet. Now I can kind of do it, right? But not accurate. Uh, here, let's just do can't defeat airman. What's kind of a meme? Now I'm messing up a lot, but that proves my point. Now I can aim at the targets pretty well, right? But I can miss. But say I put on relax mode. I'm pretty much not going to miss for the most part. Now, 
A lot of you may be thinking, well, what does this have to do with anything, Mr. Surefour? Of course relax is easy. All you have to do is aim. Well, that's the point. Now, a lot of people get this mixed up. They say, oh, man, my aim's really bad right now. So, like, if you're playing Osu and you're like, holy fuck, I'm missing so much. My aim's really bad. If you just put on relax mode, you'll see that you pretty much hit everything. The problem is you may not be clicking. And uh, the reason I'm saying this is because the most important part of aiming in general is not how you aim, not whether you stop on the target correctly. Like, you don't always have to, like, go right to someone's head and stop on it. The most important part is whether you click on their head. So when you're trying to shoot or when you're trying to click heads, don't be thinking about where your cursor is. Think about when you need to click, if that makes sense. Basically, you have to trust that you're comfortable in your own sensitivity and you're just your your hands just going to move when you want to click. As soon as you start looking at your own cursor or your own mark like a uh, crosshair, you start losing time on when you want to click on them. Like if you're moving to when they're going to and you're waiting to see when your cursor goes to their head to click, they might move. And that's why flick shots are really good because you go, the guy's right there. I want to click on his head now. And you say, I'm going to click. I'm going to click. I'm going to click. Basically, you're, you're telling your cursor when you want to click, not when your, your cursor isn't telling you when you want to click. And uh, I think a, a good video for this everyone everyone's seen this clip probably maybe not everyone so can anyone tell me why i even showed this clip the reason for it is he didn't even stop on his head when he clicked. He overshot. He, he, he was right here and he ended up right here. Now basically, when he gets he when he starts getting shot at, there's only one thing, there's only one place he could really be. So in his mind, when he's moving his mouse, he's he just clicks. He doesn't stop over there. He just assumes where he will be when he needs to shoot. And he, it, like, that's how it is. A lot of time people overshoot, but they will click at the right time. Basically, you're just trusting that your cursor will be somewhere where you need it to be when you click. Not, he's not waiting for his crosshair to be on his head before he clicks. He just kind of moves his mouse and clicks. And that's why he kind of just swipes, but he still shoots him. And then the second shot is the correction shot in case he missed. Basically, the moral of the story on how you want to aim is you want to think about when you're clicking rather than where your cursor is. And then finding the correct sensitivity and the comfortable mouse is just helping you be confident that when you're moving your mouse, it'll just be there when you click. So basically, uh, what's the point of a crosshair? I think that's the question. So. As you get used to moving your mouse, and as you get used to muscle memory, and this just happens with practice, this is also how some people, better than others, some people just pick it up quicker, some people just have natural affinities to thing, but all it comes down to is practice and years of experience, but the reason you have a crosshair is so you know exactly where, it's like basically a measurement tool. So if your crosshair is right here, if you've been playing the game long enough, you know, I need to, I know my hand needs to move this much actually said a lot of to get to I this head. It's just a measurement tool. Simp uh, theoretically, you could just play with no crosshair, but a crosshair helps you basically have a visual aid on how much you actually have to move it. So if you're here you're, and you want to go to the far left robot, you're like, holy fuck, I need to move my mouse a lot. But it's basically a measurement tool on how much you need to move your arm, if that makes any sense. Say uh, you're walking and you're like, oh god, I see an enemy, and your crosshair's here when you saw him. First, you kind of quickly see how long, or you, 
it, it's it, this all happens in your head really quick when you actually want to do it so i'm kind of stumbling and explaining it but first thing you do is see the target you want to shoot at notice how far away they are and then decide when you want to click and that all, all that all happens at a split second and then when you decide when you want to click is when you move your mouse so you're like i want to click now i want to click now i want to click now it's not like i want to click now i want to click now because you move you you lose a split second now now and then you can try like over flicking but trying to like shoot when you're over flicking because you don't always have to stop right on the target you just have to know when you need to click on the target pretty much in osu and in the actual game the most important thing is not your aim but when you want to click and osu helps you realize this because like you you can see the re the reason i i learned this in osu or how it gave me the idea is because uh in osu the game is telling you when you need to click and you can see that by the little the circle closing on the circle and you just you just need to know the timing but of course the most important thing is clicking when you need to so basically osu is like the very very base of like learning how to aim and be accurate and it's kind of helping you do it. and that's the other thing osu you want to be looking at when you need to click not when you're not where your cursor is on the screen because you just need to trust that your cursor is going to be on the target when you need to click and that comes to like the whole when you want to click that's when you're moving your uh hand tracking in its fundamental sense is just sticking on the target make sure you're always on them right now tracking and this is why i say wrist aim is the best for tracking is because it's all about small adjustments small adjustments I'm just making sure you keep on the person after this dm i'll give you guys some comparatives between the different aim styles and what you need for them basically tracking is like hmm looking for my guy look at my friend there he is now i just need to stick on him instead of like flicking where you're moving your mouse and then you're, you're clicking you're deciding when you click you're just clicking all the time so this this is where you want to know where your cursor is all the time tracking is when you want to always be looking at your cursor so it's the opposite of flicking for the most part because you don't need to really worry about clicking anymore because you're always clicking you basically just want to look at your cursor make sure it's always on the person everyone get your notebooks out no sleeping no playing games get off your phones don't look at your dicks let's start off with paint again so here we have paint da, da, da. and here we're gonna make a spectrum and in aiming there's three three spectrums we have flicking here we have tracking and here we have projectile now who wants some brownie points what is the difference between or what what fills these gaps here reaction and prediction flicking is on mostly the reaction spectrum because you don't really need to predict when someone is going you just see this sick man right here and you're like oh i just want to shoot him bam so you're just reacting to where somewhere it is you're just going projectile is you have a little man right here and he's going that way so you predict is he still going to be going that way so i'm going to shoot a rocket right here so when he strolls along here my rocket hits him when he's right here but tracking you have to do both you got a guy here but the reaction part is you have to keep your cursor on the person the prediction part is you kind of want to preemptively move your mouse in a direction to keep still on him so say he's going to the right and you see him still going to the right if you think he's just going to keep going right you're already preemptively moving your mouse to the right while staying on him because you're predicting that he's still going to be going right so with that you're just following him the whole time 
And then, say he gets to here, and all of a sudden he moves left. You might, for a split second, still go right, but then you react to his movement, and then you follow him again. So tracking is a mixture of reaction and prediction. Flicking is pure reaction for the most part, and projectile is mostly prediction. We have our little Bishu bot here. So now the reason tracking is easier as Zarya is uh, you get to pretty much choose your distance of uh, engagement and how far you want to be with someone because th this is this is your anything in between this range is pretty much what you can hit. So if you want to stay at a, like a medium range, you can pretty much stay it because you 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 react to the enemy movements as well and. One of the ways that you can help yourself track so you don't have to move your mouse as much is you follow their movement. So like, if I just go left with him, I don't even have to move my mouse. And then when they stand still, you want to AD so you're ready for whenever they move. So then you're like... A lot of the times, if you're mostly moving your mouse to aim, it's better to go the opposite direction of what they're going. Because if you go if you go with them and you want to move your mouse, you usually overshoot. But say they're going right, I just assume they keep going right. God fucking damn it. Why is she all of a sudden using bubbles? <laughs> Anyways, if she's going right, I'm pretty much assuming she's going right and just looking towards it and still following. And then when she stops, I might overshoot, but I correct myself quickly. The reason that tracking is a little bit harder as Tracer is your distances and how fast you have to move your mouse are differ a lot. So tr with Zarya, you can pretty much just like stay at a medium distance the whole time and you have a pretty consistent way you have to move your mouse. But as soon as you're a tracer, you have to blink and then get real close, go far away and then track little, then track really close again. So with tracer, you pretty much have to like preemptively move your mouse when you blink on someone so you're ready to track. And then you have to have really good reaction time and good vision when you go right on someone that you can like accurately look at how they're moving while staying safe. So that's why tracking on Tracer is different than tracking on Zara. And that's why a lot of players uh, usually have different Tracer senses because it needs to be a little bit higher. All right, I'm about to teach you the most important thing in Overwatch. Aim isn't even the most important thing in Overwatch. It's abusing the bullshit movement mechanics in this game. All right. So how do you dodge a Widowmaker chat? There's plenty of ways. You AD, AD spam. AD, 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 AD. But you don't only want to AD. Why is that chat? Because your head stays at the same level. And sometimes the Widowmaker can just flick and get lucky when you're AD, ADing. So you also want to crouch. And that makes it so your head dips down. But, you don't want to crouch spam in a V like this. Basically, you want to crouch so your head goes in like a reverse V. Or you, you switch it up so it's more like a, a weird N. So they have to predict whether you're going to be here, 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 or here. Instead of just here, 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 or here, and here. If you're doing straight left, they only have to do here or here or here. This, they have to do all of this. But this, they got they got a lot they have to try and shoot if they want to one-shot your head. If you do it back and forth, you can make an infinity symbol. But then you get, get shot here. Basically, uh, what happens is it's, it's really hard to uh, see without like someone doing it for me. But when you're moving left your head goes to the right. When you move right, your head peaks to the right a bit. And then, say you crouch and go left when you were going right, 
you basically want to go to the opposite of direction of what you were just going your head basically turns to the opposite way and there's a big gap that people can miss with because of it and then you just want to like switch it up a lot and you never just want to go left right left right left right left right in the same spot because people will learn a pattern and maybe shoot you you want to go left and then like right and then you want to like switch it up a bunch and then you add crouches into that and then you make your movement hella fucking unpredictable and impossible but you want to hold crouch for a little bit because if you just tap it you don't really get the benefit of the crouch because your head doesn't really move because it just goes back to the same spot so it's like like that so when you're dodging projectile heroes you're here this is you this is chat smile when you're dodging a projectile hero and you're going to the right you want to you want to think about when he's going to shoot so basically to predict you have to counter predict how you're getting predicted to dodge projectile heroes for a hanzo for example he's right here he's got his bow and he wants to bone you dude right he wants to bone and arrow you say you're moving to the right but you decide to turn left right here you you need to be able to turn left right before he shoots because if you turn left right as he shoots you're still gonna get hit because you didn't have enough time to move from your spot because at that point you're basically standing still or if he shoots and predicts correctly before you even think about turning left you walk into his arrow so what you want to do is right when he fires the arrow or right before he fires the arrow you want to just been pressing left because then it just zooms past you so basically you're predicting when he's gonna shoot about how he predicts your movement and then sometimes some people with projectile heroes will predict that you're going to go left when you thought he was going to shoot and then you walk into his prediction of your prediction <laughs> so projectile heroes is just like a huge mind game and luck pretty much wider strafes against projectiles pretty much yeah yeah that as well you want wider strafes so they have to they have to predict more there's more variables the longer you go but you don't want to go too long because if they predict that you're just going to go long enough they go to here but say you're just ad ading like this they can kind of just shoot in the middle and you're pretty much going to walk into it from either side but if you have a long projectile they have to like have a lot more variable on when they're doing but one of the things it's bad to do unless you're like tracer or genji is you don't want to jump against projectile heroes and why is that chat that's right easy prediction you're here and then the little hanzo's right here with his bone and arrow and you decide to jump now jumping makes it so you have an arc and you're always going to go to this spot no matter what for the most part so now he doesn't have to predict he just has to figure out when you're going to be here with maps and then shoot you in the head and then you're dead you're ad ading to dodge basically it's kind of like csgo everyone's played most of you in chat have played csgo chat and what do you have to do in csgo when you want to shoot you have to press d right when you press a so you're strafing left you press d and then you shoot because you have to stop yourself or else you miss now when you're doing like a tracking hero or a flicking hero basically right when you press d you're moving your mouse left at the same velocity of your movement so then you aim at the same spot for the most part so you have to like subconsciously be moving your mouse while you're moving your keyboard while you're looking at what the enemy is doing and reacting to their movement and that's why aiming at the very high level of overwatch is very hard and very random because there's a lot of variables 